For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 241 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 140, okay. H.R. 241, a bill to authorize the conveyance of okay, certain national right. forest system lands in the Los Padres National Forest in California. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, and the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Grijalva, each will control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from Washington. Speaker, ask me now as consent to withdraw my motion. The gentleman may withdraw as a matter of right. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? Mr. Speaker, I now rise to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 2060 as amended. Clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 305, H.R. 2060, a bill to amend the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act to adjust the Crooked River boundary to provide water certainty for the city of Prineville, Oregon, and for other purposes. So into the role, the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, and the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Gehalva, will each control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend the remarks and include extraneous material on the bill under consideration. Without objection. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 2060, sponsored by our colleague from uh, Oregon, Mr. Walden, is an important step towards restoring water and power abundance and jobs to a rural area that has been devastated by federal logging restrictions. This bill is a reflection of years of negotiation. Its, uh, its supporters include those who would normally be water adversaries in most parts of the West. Municipalities, irrigators, the warm uh, spring tribes, utilities, organized labor, and an environmental organization have come together to support this legislation. So I commend my colleague from Oregon for working hard to bring these many parties together, and I urge adoption of this common sense legislation and I reserve the balance of my time. I'm going to reserve gentleman from Arizona. Mr. Speaker, I, I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend remarks on the legislation. Without objection. Gentleman's Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 2060, as my colleague described, does several things, including providing water and economic certainty to the city of Pine, Prineville and the Ochko Irrigation District. It does so in a way, however, that provides certainty for the city and agriculture, but not the future needs of the environment. The legislation also mandates how reclamation is to operate and manage the Prime, Primeville Reservoir through the first, full, first field provision and remove some flexibility on reclamation's part to mitigate and adapt to a change in conditions. We still do not fully support the first field provision, but understand that there are ongoing negotiations that look at providing the certainty that the city needs while protecting the environment. Stakeholder-driven processes are the best way to answer our community's needs, and we look forward to working with our colleagues in the Senate and on the other side of the aisle to ensure that all needs are met and protected. And I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves his time. Gentleman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I yield as much time as you may consume to the author of this legislation, the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. Walden. Gentleman from Oregon. Thank you, uh, Chairman Hastings, for your support. And Ranking Member Grijalva, thank you for your comments on this legislation. It's Common Sense uh, Central Oregon Jobs and Water Security Act. This bill we have before us today will create jobs in Central Oregon, remove government red tape, it will protect family farmers, and improve both water flows and quality of water for fish and for wildlife, all without costing taxpayers one cent. We made it completely cost neutral. Now, the city of Prineville is the county seat of Crook County. It's located in the heart of Oregon's uh, central Oregon, and it's along the Crooked River. Crook County was among the hardest hit in the economic downturn that we've all suffered from, where unemployment even today, even today is at over 14 percent, one of the highest rates, if not the highest, in the state of Oregon. Nonetheless, 
jobs and economic growth are on the horizon in Crook County. Facebook recently built their first custom data center in Prineville and are currently expanding that project. And Apple recently announced that they're going to build a data center there and have actually already begun construction. Chairman Hastings knows well how important the technology sector can be to rural communities. Prineville is on the verge of becoming another Quincy, Washington, which is home to Yahoo, Microsoft, Dell, and others. Uh, to pursue new economic development, however, Prineville needs more water. Roughly 20 miles upriver from Prineville sits Bowman Dam and Prineville Reservoir, a Bureau of Reclamation project which holds 80,000 acre feet of uncontracted water, 80,000 acre feet that is just sitting there uncontracted. So this bill would allow Prineville to access roughly 6% of that water, or 5,100 acre feet, and the city would pay a fair market value for the water. Now, that extra water would allow the city to tell prospective companies, hey, you can bring your businesses and jobs to Prineville. We now have the water that you need. That's certainty in the job market. It would also allow the city to provide water to an additional 500 homes within the city limits, which currently the city of Prineville can't do because it has maxed out its mitigation credits. You're talking about 500 homes inside the city limits that don't have access to city water that this bill now will allow them to have access to. Because the city would access the water through the ground and not from directly behind the dam, that extra allocation of water would increase the minimum release of water from Bowman Dam by up to 7 cubic feet per second. Now that's a lot. In dry years, particularly in the winter, the higher release requirement would benefit fish and wildlife, including the blue ribbon trout fishery below Bowman Dam. This legislation also fixes a BLM error regarding the exact location of the Crooked River Wild and Scenic Boundary Line. Currently, the Wild and Scenic Line runs directly over the crest of Bowman Dam. Now, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Grijalva, let me assure you there's nothing wild or scenic about the top of a dam unless you're falling over the edge of it. This is a picture of where that is. If you just follow the center line of this road, that's where the current law says the Wild and Scenic Boundary starts. We move it downriver where it really belongs. And uh, as a result, we create another economic opportunity for the region, development of small-scale renewable hydropower that would ru create roughly 50 construction jobs over the course of two years. This dam doesn't have hydro on it today. Adding the hydro actually improves the release of the water, making uh, it better for the fish, and it creates new hydro energy and the construction jobs. My legislation also protects the Ochoco Irrigation District farmers and assures they will continue to operate their family-run farms for generations to come. Finally, this bill expedites the Mackay Creek project, which will result in increased water flows for red band trout and summer steelhead. The project's long been supported by my friends at the Warm Springs Tribe and the Deschutes River Conservancy. So I want to thank and commend the Warm Springs Tribal leaders and tribal members for their hard work working in partnership with me on this legislation. Their collaborative approach has really made a difference in the issues in the Deschutes Basin, and we appreciate the partnership and leadership that the tribal leaders have shown. This is a good common sense, job-creating bill. It's the culmination of years of collaboration between the city of Prineville, Crook County, farmers, the Warm Springs tribes, and the Deschutes River Conservancy. I want to thank Mayor Ropey and County Judge McCabe for their leadership in working through this process. Mayor Ropey has testified before the House Natural Resources Committee and has done an excellent job advocating for the city of Prineville. Judge McCabe has worked tirelessly on these issues and to attract tech companies like Facebook and Apple to Crook County. Hopefully with positive steps like the passage of this legislation, more companies will soon bring their jobs to Prineville and to Central Oregon. So I appreciate the assistance of Ranking Member Ed Markey and uh, along with Ranking Member Grace Napolitano and of course Mr. Grijalva as well as the Chairman uh, Hastings. Thank you again for your help in moving forward on the Central Oregon Jobs and Water Security Act. I look forward to this legislation finally becoming law. And with that I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from Arizona. Continue to reserve the balance of our time. Gentlemen reserved, gentlemen from Washington. I, uh, Mr. Uh, Speaker, uh, I have uh, no other request for time, so if the gentleman is prepared to yield back, I'll yield back. Mr. Speaker, uh, yield, yield back the remainder of our time. Gentleman from Washington. Back, you want to yield back? 
Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Mr. Speaker, in many respects, this bill epitomizes what problems that those of us have in the West. This is a simple boundary change uh, to, uh, uh, to something that was designated here on the federal level. And it has taken a great deal of time, and yet and the impact will be great for the economy in that area. And as I mentioned in my opening remarks, this has broad support uh, from all the local groups and local environmental groups, as the gentleman from Oregon said. But sadly, the frustration that we continue to have when we're trying to move legislation like this to help the local job economy in these areas is you have national groups that don't live in those areas opposing it. And that just frustrates us because when you get people, especially on the local level, uh, that support this, uh, it's, it's frustrating when you have a national group that says, just because we're dealing with national land, we want to have a say in all of this. Uh, big sense of frustration for us, so I commend my friend from Oregon for uh, moving this legislation, and I urge my colleagues to support it. And with that, I, reserve, I yield back my time. Gentlemen, yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 2060 as amended? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds of those being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 2512 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 6360, H.R. 2512, a bill to provide for the conveyance of certain federal land in Clark County, Nevada, for the environmental remediation and reclamation of the Three Kids Mine Project site and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, and the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Grijalva, will each control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on this bill under consideration. Without objection. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield myself <coughs> as much time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to start this debate by defining clearly what H.R. 2512, the Three Kids Mine Remediation and Reclamation Act, does. This bill will create jobs, clean up an abandoned mine that is the responsibility of the United States government, and re represents a tremendous win-win for all the parties involved in this effort. The Three Kids Mine is located in Clark County, Nevada, adjacent to the city of Henderson. The mine was operated from 1916 until 1961. From 1942 to 1955, the United States government, through the Defense Plant Corporation, owned 446 acres of the Three Kids Mine project. The mine site was, was used to produce federally owned mag, uh, manganese ore for national defense purposes and was leased to the U.S. until 2003 to stockpile those nodules. The total Three Kids Mine project area is approximately 1,262 acres and includes 942 acres of federal lands managed by the Bureau of Land Management and the Bureau of Reclamation and 314 acres of private lands that include the mill site and the former processing site. The City of Henderson, the Henderson Redevelopment Agency, Nevada Department of Environmental Protection, Lakemore Development, uh, LLC, and the Bureau of Land Management have negotiated a plan to clean up and redevelop the Three Kids Mine Project site that includes the purchase of 948 acres of federal lands. The site is contaminated with arsenic, lead, and other heavy metals and petroleum uh, hydrocarbons. Cost estimates for cleanup and reclamation at the site range from $300 million to over a $1 billion. The lower cost estimates apply to on-site remediation and disposal of tailings and other mi minerals in the open pits if it can be accomplished without contaminating groundwater. The higher cost estimates is associated with off-site disposal of the contaminated material. The purchase price of the federal lands would be adjusted to reflect the actual cleanup cost of the federal and non-federal lands for the federal government has environmental liability uh, resulting from the mill, the processing facilities, and the storage of federal-owned uh, manganese nodules. The city of Henderson and the developer would absolve the federal government if any liability uh, arises for the site. 
All in all, Mr. Speaker, this is a win-win for everyone involved. The environmental problems are addressed, the, the abandoned mine site is reclaimed, and the, ran the land redeveloped for beneficial use, all at no cost to the American taxpayers. This should provide a framework for other abandoned mine sites that are near or adjacent to small towns and larger urban areas. That's why this legislation is needed, and that's why I urge my colleagues to support this, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the gentleman from Arizona. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. And I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 2512 would seek to address the abandoned Three Kids Mine in Nevada. The Three Kids Mine site is an abandoned manganese mine and mill near Las Vegas. Today, the abandoned mine has, op has opened mine pits and significant volumes of toxic manganese tailings containing arsenic, lead, and diesel fuel, which the BLM has said pose significant risk to public health, safety, and the environment. H.R. 2512 would direct the BLM to convey the federal portions of, three kids mine, of the Three Kids Mine site to the Redevelopment Agency of the City of Henderson, Nevada, and require remediation and reclamation of the site. We support the goals of H.R. 2512 to clean up the toxic abandoned mine site and, and commend the sponsors on the legislation on their innovative thinking with, repre with respect to addressing this problem. However, the estimates of cost addressing this abandoned mine site are large and uncertain. According to the Bureau of Land Management, the cost of reclaiming and remediating this abandoned mine site is estimated to be between $300 million and $1.3 billion. We continue to have concerns about who would assume responsibility for these costs should the cleanup be abandoned for any reason in the, and in the future because this legislation would release the United States from all liabilities related to the Three Kids Mine site, including under environmental laws such as the Comprehensive Environmental Response, Compensation, and Liability Act. Such a release of liability for the United States would mean that in the event that the developer is unable to complete the cleanup of the three mines, the three kids mine, there would be no responsible party. We also have concerns about the precedent that would be set by waiving the liability of the United States for the cleanup of this site, and we worry we are trying to ensure that private entities are held responsible for cleaning up other sites. However, while we continue to have some concerns regarding the process outlined by the legislation, we do support the goals of, the, of H.R. 2512 to reclaim this abandoned mine site. We do not oppose the legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, gentleman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to yield as much time as you may consume to the author of this very important piece of legislation, the gentleman from Nevada, Mr. Heck. Gentleman from Nevada. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, uh, for your assistance in moving forward with this important piece of legislation. I rise in support of H.R. 2512, the Three Kids Mine Remediation and Reclamation Act of 2012, legislation that I introduced with the support of the entire Nevada delegation to address a serious environmental, public safety, and abandoned mine reclamation issue in the city of Henderson, Nevada. The Three Kids Mine is, as mentioned, an abandoned manganese mine and mill site consisting of approximately 1,262 acres of both federal and private lands, which lie within the Henderson city limits, and is literally right across the street from Lake Mead Parkway, where there's an increasing number of homes and businesses. The Three Kids Mine was owned and operated by various parties over the years, including the United States, from approximately 1917 through 1961, and used as a storage area for federal manganese or reserves from the late 1950s through 2003. The project site contains numerous large, unstable, sheer cliff open pits as deep as 400 feet, huge volumes of mine overburdens and tailings, mill facility remnants, and waste disposal areas. To give a sense of scale, mine overburden is 10 stories high in some areas. Abandoned waste ponds are up to 60 feet deep and filled with over 1 million cubic yards of gelatinous tailings containing high concentrations of arsenic, lead, and petroleum compounds. H.R. 2512 provides an innovative solution for cleaning up the Three Kids Mine site. 
In its simplest form, the legislation directs the Secretary of the Interior to convey the federal lands at the project site, approximately 948 acres, at fair market value, taking into account the costs of investigating and remediating the entire site, which includes an additional 314 acres of now private lands that were used historically in mine operations. Important to note that the government will receive a release of liability for cleanup of both the federal and private lands under the legislation before the federal lands are conveyed. The state must enter into a binding consent agreement under which the cleanup of the entire project site will occur. The consent agreement must include financial assurances to ensure the completion of the remediation and reclamation of the site. The cleanup will be financed with private capital and Nevada tax increment financing at no cost to the federal government. The Three Kids Mine Remediation and Reclamation Act is the result of over four years of work among the City of Henderson Redevelopment Agency, the Department of the Interior, the State of Nevada, and private entities. This legislation is a unique and complex public-private partnership proposal. It will finally lead to the cleanup of the Three Kids Mine site at no cost to the federal government, while at the same time providing for economic development and the creation of as many 3,000 jobs. I believe that this initiative offers a viable solution for the cleanup and reclamation of the Three Kids Mine and could serve as a model for other similar sites across the country. This legislation is a win for the economy, it is a win for the environment, and it is a win for the federal taxpayer. I encourage my colleagues to join me in supporting this legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, well, as I indicated, the precedent of uh, waiving the liability of the United States to, uh, for the cleanup and reclamation of this site is, uh, is of concern. Uh, of equal concern is the fact that as Henderson has grown into the site and, uh, and grown closer and closer, that uh, BLM has stated that they don't have the ris resources to provide uh, the money to clean this site adequately, so it just sits there. Uh, this is uh, this developer, and if the consent decree is binding, as has been indicated by the sponsor, is an opportunity. Well, it's not uh, a perfect opportunity uh, from my perspective. It is indeed uh, an opportunity to deal with that cleanup and not just have the site sit there in perpetuity without any attention as everything else grows around it. So with that, I, uh, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen Reserves, gentlemen from Washington. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would uh, ask my uh, colleague from Arizona if he's had any more speakers. I have no more speaker requests for time on my side. I would yield back, back the balance of my time. Gentleman so. yields back, gentlemen from Washington. I yield back the balance of my time and urge the adoption of the resolution. Gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 2512 as amended? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the Chair, two-thirds of those being in the affirmative the rules are suspended and the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 3263. Clerk will report the title of the bill. Union Calendar Number 309, H.R. 3263, a bill to authorize the Secretary of the Interior to allow the storage and conveyance of non-project water at the Norman Project in Oklahoma and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, and the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Grijalva, each will control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I ask you now as consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend the remarks and include extraneous materials on the bill under consideration. Without objection. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentlemen's recognition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 3263, introduced by our colleague from Oklahoma, Mr. Cole, allows the Central Oklahoma Master Conservancy District to store water purchased from Oklahoma City in Lake Thunderbird. This legislation is necessary since federal regulations do not allow water transfers from out-of-basin areas unless Congress expressly authorizes such a transfer. This bill specifically states that any costs associated with its enactment will be borne by the project beneficiary. It is a no-nonsense bill that will provide additional water storage during times of drought. So I thank our colleague, from, uh, Mr. Cole, for sponsoring this common-sense bill, and I urge adoption of the measure, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentleman's recognized. Thank you. 
Uh, as my colleague stated, H.R. 3263 authorizes storage of non-project water in Lake Thunderbird Reservoir. The ability to store water at Lake Thunderbird Reservoir will provide reclamation and the managers with flexibility in managing the system. The administration supports H.R. 3263 and we have heard from the tribes around the region who do not object from the, to, the, to this legislation. And I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to yield as much time as you may consume to the sponsor of this legislation, the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Cole. The gentleman from Oklahoma. I thank the Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding. And I, I thank Chairman Hastings and Ranking Member Markey for their help in moving this legislation, and also the staff, Natural Resources Committee, who have been very, very supportive and very helpful. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of my legislation, H.R. 3263, the Lake Thunderbird Efficient Use uh, Act of 2011. Lake Thunderbird is a Bureau of Reclamation project which provides municipal water to Norman, Dell City, and Midwest City, all major municipalities in the Oklahoma City metropolitan area. In recent years, the watershed that feeds Lake Thunderbird has not been able to keep that lake full. The water that remains is of poor quality and ill-suited for drinking water and recreation. Lake Thunderbird was built to provide water to water a water-starved region, and this legislation would help the Bureau of Reclamation meet the original goals of this project. The bill allows the Central Oklahoma Master Conservatory District to acquire and store water from outside the Bureau of Reclamation system in Lake Thunderbird. Any cost associated with this action would be paid for by the Conservancy District. This legislation costs federal taxpayers nothing. Frankly, Mr. Speaker, in my view, this is the type of legislation and, or the type of action that we should be able to take administratively. However, under current law, it requires congressional consent. Mr. Speaker, I first initiated this legislation uh, in the 110th Congress when Central Oklahoma was in the midst of a significant drought. In July of 2011, Oklahoma recorded the driest month ever recorded by any of the 50 states since records have been kept. Central Oklahoma remains in a drought that's forecast to continue and worsen this summer. H.R. 3263 is important to the economic growth of Central Oklahoma. The Oklahoma City metropolitan area has seen tremendous growth over the past decade and has been a positive economic force at a time of great challenges to the national economy. Water must be available to support the continued growth of this region. This straightforward and common sense legislation is an important tool to support further growth in central Oklahoma. Mr. Speaker, again, I want to thank the chairman and the ranking member for their cooperation. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on this legislation, and with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Arizona. Mr. Speaker, if I may inquire of uh, the chairman if he has any additional speakers. I have one more uh, speaker. Reserve the balance. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Washington. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm very pleased to yield as much time as it may consume to another member from Oklahoma, the gentleman from Oklahoma, Mr. Langford. Gentleman from Oklahoma. Thank you. I would like to as well thank uh, my colleague Tom Cole and uh, for his work on this. And uh, he is the one who's really has sponsored this, has focused on it, has driven it through to completion. And it is a very important thing for communities that are both in his district and in my district as well. Uh, H.R. 3263 authorizes the Secretary of the Interior to simply amend an existing contract with the Central Oklahoma Master Conservatory District for the storage of non-project water in Lake Thunderbird. It's very simple and straightforward. This bill will allow the district to augment water if the Secretary determines that there's enough excess ca capacity in the reservoir. Since the summer of 2010, Oklahoma has been in a severe drought. This has seriously endangered the quality and supply of our drinking water. To address this devastating sh shortage, Central Oklahoma Master Conservatory District would, could purchase water from Oklahoma City to supply high-quality water through the Atoka Pipeline to, for Midwest City, Dell City, and Norman. Regrettably, Congress must act before this resource can be tapped. It is imperative that we remedy the storage issues faced by these cities, and Congress shouldn't stand in the way of this. It is amazing that it takes an act of Congress for an Oklahoma lake to buy water from another Oklahoma lake. No federal funds are needed, only Congress giving the permission to allow Oklahomans the flexibility to use their own water 
as needed. I'm strongly in support of this. This is the type of thing that should be widely bipartisan and is a simple fix, and hopefully we can fix this legislatively in the future to not have to have an act of Congress just for us to use our own water in each state. With that, I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Arizona. <clears throat> Gentleman from Arizona. Mr. Speaker, the same inquiry to the chair. I have no more requests for time. Yield back the balance of my Gentleman time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Washington. And I yield back the balance of my time and urge adoption of the measure. Uh, gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 3263? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The opinion of the chair, two-thirds of being in the affirmative. The uh, rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 241 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 140, H.R. 241, a bill to authorize the conveyance of certain national forest system lands in the Los Padres National Forest in California. Pursuant to the rule of the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, and the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Grijalva, each will control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend the remarks and include extraneous material under the bill under consideration. Without objection. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 241 authorizes the Forest Service to convey for appraised market value approximately five acres of the Las Padres National Forest to the White Lotus Foundation. Due to steep topography, there is a limited access to the White Lotus Foundation other than a short access road that crosses Forest Service land. This bill would allow the foundation to acquire this parcel and ensure public access to their facilities. So I urge my colleagues to support this legislation that's, authorized by, that's uh, authored by our colleague from California, Mr. Gallagher, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen reserves, gentlemen from Arizona. I yield myself as much time as I may consume, Mr. Speaker. Recognized. Thank you. H.R. 241, sponsored by the gentleman from California, provides for the conveyance of five acres of land from Los Padres National Forest to White Lotus Foundation. This conveyance allows for better access to a retreat owned by the foundation. We have no objections to this legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserved, gentleman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I am very pleased to yield as much time as you may consume to the author of this legislation, Mr. Gallagher from California. Gentleman from California. I, I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of my legislation, H.R. 241. This bill will authorize the Forest Service to convey a small par uh, parcel of land on the perimeter of the Los Padres National Forest to a non-profit organization, the White Lotus Foundation. In 1983, the White Lotus Foundation inherited property in the hills above Santa Barbara, California, on the border of the Los Padres National Forest. After operating at this location for over 25 years, the Forest Service sent a letter to the White Lotus Foundation notifying them that of a 120th of an acre encroachment on the Forest Service land. The encroachment in question is located on a loop of the only road that allows White Lotus and the rest of the public access to, the, uh, to and from the White Lotus property. Due to the steep topography, the foundation has no longer uh, have any other reasonable alternatives. The loop lies on flat ground, which holds equipment storage for fire and flood emergencies and provides access to a water pump and other necessary equipment. There is no other flat ground on which to move these items, and without this space, the foundation will be forced to cease operations. My legislation authorizes the Forest Service to enter into a land exchange with the White Lotus Foundation and land, uh, for land worth no less than the appraised market value. If this land exchange does not occur within two years, the Forest Service is allowed to convey the land that would benefit White Lotus and to determine the amount to be uh, conveyed. If the Forest Service does not feel that this land conveyance is in the best interest, it does not have to sell any federal land to White Lotus. However, if the land sale does move ahead, my legislation will not cost the taxpayers a single penny. White Lotus will pay for the land, the survey, and all administrative costs. 
White Lotus will pay uh, uh, any related costs. There are no exemptions uh, from NEPA or other environmental laws. The land in question is not protected wilderness or any other specifically designated area. In closing, I want to thank the chairman, the ranking member, and uh, my colleagues for allowing this to be brought to the floor today. I urge uh, the support for legislation H.R. 241 and would yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Arizona. I, I yield back the balance of my time. Mr. Gentleman Speaker. yields back. Gentleman from Washington. Well I, I yield back the balance of my time and urge adoption of the measure. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 241 as amended? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass S-292. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 295, Senate 292, a bill to resolve the claims of the Bering Straits Native Corporation and the State of Alaska to land adjacent to Salmon Lake in the State of Alaska and to provide for the conveyance to the Bering Straits Native Corporation of certain other public land and partial satisfaction of the land entitlement of the corporation under the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act. So into the role of the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, and the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Buhalva, will each control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from Washington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to write, revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on the bill under consideration. Without objection. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentlemen's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, S-292 ratifies the Salmon Lake Area Ownership and Consolidation Agreement signed in 2007 by the State of Alaska, the United States, and the Bering Straits Native Corporation. The agreement resolves overlapping claims to certain public lands by the State of Alaska and the Bering Straits Native Corporation. The claims arose from the implementation of the Alaska Statehood Act of 1958 and the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act of 1971. Though similar legislation sponsored by the gentleman from Alaska and the sponsor, uh, sponsor in the House of this bill, Mr. Young, passed uh, with, uh, by 410 to nothing in the 111th Congress, the Committee on Natural Resources undertook regular order on S-292, including a hearing in the Subcommittee on Indian and Alaska Native Affairs and a markup uh, in the full committee which reported the bill out favorably. I am unaware of any opposition to S-292, and so I urge full House support for the motion uh, to suspend the rules and pass this bill today, and with that I reserve the balance of my time. First gentleman from Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of S-292, a bill that ratifies an agreement between the United States, the Bering Straits Native Corporation, and the State of Alaska by transferring certain federal lands to the Bering Straits Native Corporation and the State of Alaska. S-292 is a result of years of negotiations between the parties regarding over, overlapping land selections made by the Bering Straits Native Corporation under the Al Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act and the State of Alaska under its Statehood Act. The bill reasonably and sensibly finalizes each party's interest in the land around Salmon Lake, an area of great importance to, to the people of the Bering Strait region. With that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, gentleman from Washington. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to yield as much time as you may consume the author of the legislation at the last Congress passed, the gentleman from Alaska, Mr. Young. Gentleman from Alaska. Mr. Speaker, it's been said this is a simple bill. In a way, it is simple, but it solves a great problem. As mentioned by the chairman and the ranking member, this bill probably wasn't necessarily being uh, passed if it wasn't because of the conflict we had between the state when we passed statehood the Native Land Claims Act, and of course the BLM. There is no one that objects to this bill. It solves a very important problem for the local people in a subsistence style living. It also takes, in, uh, takes care of the recreational areas that they can be utilizing, and it's a right bill to do for the state of Alaska, the Alaska Natives. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to speak on another subject for a short moment, which I believe a camera relates to this. Uh, for the people listening to this, uh, 
great display of legislative action on the House floor, uh, we'd like to remind them, you know, Little Red Riding Hood, do not go to sleep. Uh, just because the prices of gas have been dropping at the pumps, uh, do not be lured into the idea that everything's going to be okay. Because I've watched this now in my 40 years here go up and down, up and down, and every time we start to do something, start moving forward for self-dependency on our fossil fuels, those that are providing us the fuel from overseas that cost a great bloodshed and a cut of dollars, uh, they take and drop their prices. When doing so, we start getting lulled back to sleep and we don't do anything, and then they'll jack the prices up again and we'll whole economy, whole lot of cup recover. So I'm asking the public to understand one thing. Do not go to sleep just because you go up to the pump station now and put that in the house. Oh, my, gas is only 360 when it was $4.15 and headed to $5. Watch it very closely, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this, everybody on the floor of this house, because you are going to sleep. Oh, everything's fine and dandy. We do not have to worry about this anymore. Our good friends in the Middle East will take care of us. And yes, the good friend in Venezuela, Hugo Vazquez. Think about this a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're just where we were back in 1973 when we passed the Alaskan, Trans-Alaskan Pipeline. We had an embargo. People were lined up to buy the gasoline. Lined up and actually shooting at one another because it was a, at that time 36 cents a gallon. And we built the Trans Alaska Pipeline and we lowered that price very rapidly. As it went down, the economy came back and people weren't shooting anyone, anyone more. They were doing, in fact, one thing that they, we need to do today. That is the reality that we must start producing our own fossil fuels. Yes, fossil fuels, not wind power. Not solar power. Yes, they're good. But fossil fuels that move objects. Everybody listening to this show today, keep in mind, every time you get in that car, you're moving weight. Every truck that delivers a product to the grocery store and to any place you buy is moved by fossil fuels. Not just made by fossil fuels, moved by fossil fuels. The trains, the planes, the ships, and yes, the automobile. We spent, or will spend this year, close to $300 billion buying fossil fuels from people who do not like us. Do not even tolerate us most of the time. would like to kill us every time. And why this Congress and why the administration, yes, the previous administrations, no one's innocent in this project, will not set forth an energy policy that doesn't involve just wind power and sun power but involves all the powers that we have to produce energy for the people of America. The coal, yes, we're going to burn cheap coal. It can be burned and should be burned. But most of all, the oil, which we're still importing from abroad. That's what we have to do. So I ask you, don't go to sleep, ladies and gentlemen, because the persons that raise the price of oil are there, and they will do it again. And this Congress will say, oh, we've got to do something. We'll have to do something. And by the time the prices go so high, it affects our economy, it will start going back down when we try to do something. I'm saying under the leadership on this side of the aisle, we have an energy package. It's been sent over to the other body. I know I'm not supposed to mention that other body. In fact, I'm not. It's the other body. It has not passed any energy legislation. We've done it on the House side numerous times, not just this year and last year, even some of the years before, we have passed energy legislation. But it's time for this Congress, a reflection of the American people, to rise up and say, we are going to do something so those people that have been hurting us all these years, $4 trillion worth of oil has been spent in the last 14 years overseas. Trillion, ladies and gentlemen, that was equal to the national debt. But take $4 trillion off the existing debt. So see where we would be today. We wouldn't have the unemployment rate. The president wouldn't have to say, well, it's getting a little better. The economy is better than it was, they say. But it all relates back to cheap energy. Energy that can be afforded by the working class people of America. 
the working class people of America, not the rich that can afford it, the working class will provide the economy to this machine that we have called a democracy. So I'm asking the American public and this body to wake up. Wake up and let's do what's right. Wake up the other body and do what is right for the future of this nation. With that, I yield back the time. I'm going to yield back, gentlemen from Arizona. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I, I know that the gentleman from Alaska will be pleased to know that the production of fossil fuels from our public lands is at a record high, and the percentage of our oil from imports is dropping uh, every year. Uh, the bill before us today resolves competing land claims. We support that, and we reserve the balance of our time. I'm in reserve. Gentleman from Washington. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I advise my friend from Arizona I have no more requests for time on this legislation. Yield back the balance of our time, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Washington. I urge adoption of this legislation and yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Senate 292? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In opinion of the chair, the Mr. ayes Speaker? have it. Uh, Two-thirds of those being in the affirmative. The gentleman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I object to the vote on the grounds that a quorum is not present and make a point of order that a quorum is not present. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20 in the chair's prior announcement, further proceedings on this motion will be postponed. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass ACE S-363. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Senate 363 an act to authorize the Secretary of Commerce to convey property of the National Oceanic and Atm Atmospheric Administration to the city of Pascu Pascagoula, Mississippi, and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, and the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Grijalva, each will control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I ask now his consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on the bill under consideration. Without objection. Gentleman I, from Washington. I yield myself as much time as I may. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, S-363, introduced by Senator Wicker from Mississippi, would authorize the Secretary of Commerce to convey less than one acre of property owned by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association to the city of Pascagoula, Mississippi. This would improve operations of a NOAA Science Center and give the city river access and space for a park. The bill specifies that a land conveyance could occur provided that the United States receives at least the fair market value for the property or in-kind exchange. The city and the agency have identified properties to exchange and so therefore both par uh, parties are in agreement. S-363 would simply allow them to go forward with this land exchange. So I urge adoption and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen reserved. Gentlemen from Arizona. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentlemen's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, many years ago, the National Ocean the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration fenced off two small parcels of land plus a portion of a street outside of their Pascagoula, Mississippi facility for security purposes. Recently, NOAA has been using this property for storage and parking. NOAA would like to secure this land, which is now back under the ownership of the city of Pas Pascagoula, to accommodate storage and future expansion of their facility. In exchange for these two parcels of land, NOAA proposes to transfer real estate to the city of Pascagoula to develop waterfront property for the purposes of creating a public green space as part of the overall redevelopment plan in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. NOAA and the city have each identified the parcels of land to be considered for this transaction, and NOAA is prepared to contract for the land surveys and appraisals necessary to prepare the acquisition and disposal documents. NOAA and the city have both expressed written support for this land exchange, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, gentleman from Washington. Uh, Mr. Speaker, once again, I have no request for time. I mentioned to my gentleman friend from Arizona. Mr. Speaker, yield back the balance of our time. Gentleman yields back, gentleman from Washington. Y yield back. They yield back. Gentlemen. Yeah, Mr. Speaker. I, I was thinking about the other gentleman from Washington that's on right, the floor. Right, right, right. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, yields back his time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass Senate 363? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. 
In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, is the gentleman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I object to the vote on the grounds that a quorum is not present and make a point of order that a quorum is not present. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20 in the chair's prior announcement, further proceedings on this motion will be postponed. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, rise? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 1747 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the or bill. 1740 as amended. 1740 as amended. The clerk will report the title of that bill. Union calendar number 218, H.R. 1740, a bill to amend the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act to designate a segment of Illabot Creek in Skagit County, Washington, as a component of the National Wild and Scenic Rivers System. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, and the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Grijalva, each will control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from Washington. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I ask for now his consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend the remarks and include extraneous materials in the bill. Without objection. Without, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, H.R. 1740 will designate segments of the Elabit Creek in Skagit County, Washington as a component of the National Wild and Scenic Rivers System. The designated area is located within the Mount Baker Snoqualmie National Forest and it totals 14.3 uh, miles in two separate segments. The U.S. Forest Service studied this creek and found that it possesses the requisite characteristic consistent with the Wild and uh, Scenic Rivers Act. And Mr. Speaker, uh, as I mentioned, this bill was amended, is amended with some provisions that the subcommittee and the full committee thought were very important on these designations. But I urge passage and I re reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, gentleman from Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield myself as much time as I may consume. I rise in support of H.R. 1740. This le legislation seeks to add these, these river segments to the wild and scenic river system passed, passed, passed the House by, vote, by voice vote last year, this legislation. Congressman Larson has been a consistent advocate for this legislation, and we appla applaud his hard work on behalf of the river and his constituents. With that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, gentleman from Washington. I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Arizona. Thank you. Uh, I would like to yield as much time as you may consume to the sponsor of the legislation, uh, Mr. Larson. Gentleman from Washington. Mr. Uh, Speaker, I rise to support the passage of my bill, H.R. 1740, and urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this measure. I want to thank Chairman Hastings and Chairman Bishop of the subcommittee and Ranking Members Markey and Ranking Member Grijalva for their help in getting this bill to the floor. I have the honor of representing one of the most scenic parts of the country, Washington State's 2nd District. It's home to the North Cascades and the beautiful San Juan Islands. It's also home to some of the best fishing in the country, both commercially and recreationally. Salmon and ground fish stocks are beginning to recover all over the Northwest. Part of the reason that this is happening is, because, is that we've begun to protect places that are important for fish habitat. When we protect these places, we protect the jobs that come from the fishing industry. This preservation is a catalyst to introducing the legislation before us. The Labatt Creek travels from the Glacier, Peak, uh, Glacier Park wilderness uh, area to the upper Skagit River, falling about 7,000 feet during its journey. The water of the Labatt provides the optimal conditions for wild Chinook salmon, steelhead, and bull trout, all species listed as threatened. This legislation will designate 14.3 miles of Labatt Creek as wild and scenic, protecting these species while ensuring that hunting and fishing and other recreational activities continue. Protecting this area has the support of local hunters, farmers, environmentalists, anglers, and local, and state, local governments and the state government, all in my district. I want to thank Senator Murray in the Senate for introducing the bill's companion over in the Senate, and I hope that this body will, uh, that that body will take up the bill as well. And I appreciate the chairman and ranking members' support for bringing this legislation to the floor and urge my colleagues to support its passage and protect this important body of water. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I advise my friend from Arizona. I have no more requests for time. Gentleman from Arizona. No, and I yield back the balance of our time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Washington. I yield back the balance of my time and passage of the legislation. Gentleman yields back. Question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 1740 as amended? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds of those being in the affirmative,
The rules are suspended. The bill is agreed to, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 2336 as amended. Clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 251, H.R. 2336. A bill to amend the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act to designate segments of the York River and associated tributaries for study for potential inclusion in the National Wild and Scenic Rivers System. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Washington, Mr. Hastings, and the gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Grijalva, will each control 20 minutes, and the chair recognizes the gentleman from Washington. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on the bill under consideration. Without objection. I, re I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentleman's recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, H.R. 2336 authorizes the National Park Service to, st to study 11 and a quarter miles of the York River in the state of Maine for possible inclusion into the Wild and Scenic Rivers program. The Wild and Scenic Rivers Act of 1968 was intended to put a development freeze on rivers to preserve their, quote, free-flowing, end quote, characteristics. Although no risks to the river necessitating federal designation were identified, proponents of the study explained that they would benefit from the expertise of the National Park Service and its interaction with the community. As I mentioned, Mr. Speaker, this legislation was amended. The subcommittee felt that there should be some conditions, even though this is only a study. Those conditions were inserted into this bill. I urge uh, adoption, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentleman's recognized. I rise in support of the legislation and commend Congresswoman Pingree for her hard work. H.R. 2336 moves forward a study of 11 miles of the York River to determine if it is qualified to be protected as a wild and scenic river. This is a good piece of legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time.